Oh. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Cheryl Vargas. I'm the owner of Studio 928, and I'm here to play with watercolors with you. Uh, but first, I'd like to take a look and see everybody. I hear you guys are dressed in uh, 20s and 30s regalia. I want to see. Let's see. Hi, how you doing? How was the um, flappers class? Or is that next? That's next. That's next. You guys That's went smart. We've been cooking and drinking. Cooking <laughs> and drinking. <laughs> what are we drinking tonight? <laughs> well, right. Wasn't it uh, you were mixing cocktails or something too tonight, was it? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, okay. Awesome. Well, good to see you guys. I'm really excited about painting uh, with you with watercolors. We normally do acrylics, but um, your, your coordinator wanted us to do watercolors, and we're thrilled about it because I absolutely love it, and I think you're going to love it too. So with your group, we're going to be painting pine cones. I think we have some more people in the waiting room that are going to come in, so we're just in time. So before we get started, let's just do a a cheers, a happy new, happy new year, happy holidays to you all. So glad that you could join us. Mm. And also, what was that? Oh, did I? I made someone else. The, okay, hold on, just one second. We have to make sure that I made someone the co-host who shouldn't be the co-host. Just a second. We fix that. Excuse the elbow. Uh, I can't. Kristen with a K or a C? Oh, with a K. Oh, okay. Withdraw co host invitation and make Shelby the co host. And then we'll get started. But I have sexy matter. What was that? Did someone say something? No. Okay, good. All right. So we're ready to get started then. So everybody should have some brushes. You should have a number um, a number two brush and a number 12 brush. And they're both round brushes. So go ahead and take those out because those are super important for us. And there's also a little toothpick. And that toothpick was for the snowman to make those little dots uh, because there's a little container of white paint just to show you what that's for. So if later on you want to paint the snowman, there will be a video available They'll show you um, step by step how to do that. Um, but for this painting, we just need our brushes. Okay. So you also have four um, Strathmore 140 pound weight um, cold press watercolor paper. And it's a special paper that absorbs water and also allows you to do what we're going to do. So first off, before we get into the actual painting, we're going to make some lines so you guys can get accustomed to how this whole watercolor thing works, okay? So I want you to go ahead and take your little sheath off of the end of your brushes. Take them out of those packages. And oh, you, if you don't have it already, you should have... Um, some water should have two containers of water one for your dirty water and one for cleaning your brush so two containers of water some paper towels and uh your your washi tape so that's what this is this everybody got a different color it's this tiny little roll of tape that you got but before we tape our image down we're going to take some practice lines. So we gave you four cards. So one is for practicing. So we're gonna practice on this card. So you guys can make all kinds of mistakes that you wanna make on this card, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is show you how to mix watercolors, right? So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our larger brush and you have a, oh, you have this, the watercolor tray. <laughs> oh, I'll leave it right here. Okay, camera. Camera. Let me turn this around. Okay, so everybody has a watercolor palette, and this is a wonderful Faber Costell uh, watercolor palette. And so the first thing we're going to do is to put down some color, right? So we're going to pick the colors of our uh, pine cone. So let's pick up some green. We're gonna dip it into our dirty water, not our dirty water, but our first container, because it's not dirty yet. 
We're going to swish that around to get it nice and wet. Okay. Then we're going to dip it in our darker green. Okay. We're going to just swish that around, get it, you know, loosen up the pigment. And as we loosen up the pigment, and you do know that this is like one of the first art forms um, of the human civilization. Uh, cave paintings started with pigments that were found in and around where those individuals live. So we're going to just move that color around and put it on the back. These little trays, little uh, segmented areas are for your colors. So go ahead and put some green down and drop some water in as well. Drop a, few, a couple of drops of water in. We're just going to leave that there and then shake out that color. Let's go and pick up some of this lighter green and just kind of rub the color to loosen up the pigment. And then we're going to add that to the green that we already have. Okay, It should be nice and liquidy. It shouldn't be um, sticking to the plastic. It should move around. So go ahead and move those colors around a little bit. Okay, next we're going to pick up some red. Okay, we're going to put some red down. So just go ahead and move that pigment around on the top and then place it over on the left. Okay, so pick up some more water, add it to the pigment, and then just kind of drop it into the little area here. So we want to get this all ready so that when we're ready to paint, we don't have to stop and mix colors. Okay, so let's just add um, a little bit of, let's see, what color? Let's add some of this tan color over here on the left. So it's right next to this like orangey color. Let's pick up this tan color and just kind of move your brush along the pigment to loosen it up. And then let's drop it over here next to the green. So I'm going to pick up some water and just kind of drop this into the area. So yeah, you use your brush kind of like a sponge to move the water into your tray. And then let's pick up some more pigment and then just add it to that area. So the cool thing about watercolors is that even when they dry, they can be reactivated. So even if they dry while we're moving along, at least our colors are already mixed um, before we start, okay? And then next, the color we're going to mix is um, a darker brown. So let's start with let's start with our uh, color that we just used, which is kind of a yellowy umber, raw umber kind of color. And let's just kind of lay that down in the fourth area. And we're going to add brown to this. So we're actually making our palette so that we're all ready to paint when we get to our pine cone. I'm going to add just a little bit of brown to that. So I'm picking up some brown. I'm activating the pigment so I get a nice brown color. And I'm going to add that to this yellow on this side. Okay, I'm not going to leave you guys behind. So don't worry if you're not where I'm at. If you have a question, please feel free to stop me and uh, let me know what your question is. And I'll be happy to do something over for you. So no worries. We're going to have plenty of time to paint. Even though it's only <laughs> 25 or 30, what is it, 40 minutes? Is it 40 minutes? Yeah, it's 40 minutes. We have plenty of time because I've painted this a couple of times and it literally takes about six minutes to finish the painting. But what we're going to do is do some practice strokes so you can have a successful painting when you're all said and done, all right? So the next color, I've just rinsed out my brush in my um, dirty water container and I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. So watch how much black I pick up. So I'm just going to take a couple of little swirls right here. And I'm going to add it to my brown on this side. Okay, so we want a deeper, darker brown. Because this is going to be those recessed areas in our pine cone, those dark, shadowy areas in the pine cone. So don't be afraid to add. Um, some more black. So this is what you should have. When you're all said and done, 
your palette. I'm going to put a piece of white paper under here so you can see the colors a little better. Can you see those okay? Does that make a little more sense how those colors should look? So we yes. got like brown and then we have like this raw umber color and then the green and then the red and that's our color palette. Right, so now we get to do, have some fun, some willy nilly fun, all right? And before we get started, oh, look at Katie, look at her little band on the head, how cute. <laughs> I love it. Um, and your backgrounds are so fun. Um, we're gonna do a trivia question. I have some holiday trivia here for you guys. <laughs> and um, I want everybody to bring out one of their little cards and so we're, this is our practice card. Okay, this one, when you get done painting this time, hopefully you can just like flow into the rest and you can send these off to your friends. All right, uh -huh. so we, we're gonna take our number 12 brush, rinse it out really good. And the first thing we're gonna do is learn how to use that brush, okay? So I hear how it goes. So mm -hmm. we wanna have a point on this brush. Yeah. Okay. So to get that point, we just want to kind of twirl it through with our thumb and forefinger so that we get a point. Can you see that? Can we zoom in on that a little bit, Shelby? Oh, forgot to introduce Shelby, my producer over here. She's in the background. She's responsible for our, for our trivia and any technical support you might need. Okay. Um, so which Christmas, Christmas, which Christmas dish is known for its long shelf life? Is it cake? <laughs> Cranberry uh, sauce, right now. Christmas pudding, gingerbread cookies. Uh, I'm gonna get your sister set up. Okay, I'm gonna. We make it all mutely. Uh, I mute it all, but turn yourselves back on <laughs> if you'd like to answer. <laughs> um, which Christmas dish is known for its long shelf shelf life? Fruit cake. Um, fruit cake. Fruit cake. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> I, I never, hate to say fruit cake, <laughs> but I feel like it is. Fruit cake. Why do they call it fruit cake? It never tastes like anything remotely resembling <laughs> fruit, right? Or cake. <laughs> or cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so that point that we get when we twirl our brush like that is super important for those little um, evergreen branches and um, for getting into those small areas of the little berries on the evergreen tree. Um, so here, so the first thing we're going to do now that we have our little brush is we're going to use one side of this to practice strokes. So I want you to go over to your green and I want you to just touch it. Here, let me bring this more into camera view. I just want you to touch the tip of your brush in that Okay, you don't want to load your brush completely. And let's just kind of use the side of our brush. We're kind of holding it at a, I don't know, 35, 40 degree angle. And then just kind of touching the very tip of the brush to the paper. And look what a thin line you can get if you just touch the tip. Now I'm going to go back again and I'm going to add a little more pigment and press down a little harder. When I press down a little harder, I get a wider line, okay? Now, you can do the same thing with the smaller brush, okay? Let's take the tip off of this. Let's get it wet and tap off the excess water and then do the same thing and dip into the color. Make sure you, uh, your paper towel kind of acts like a, uh, I don't know, how do, how do I say it? The paper towel drinks the excess water out of your brush. So if you, mm -hmm. if, if you put your brush in the water, tap it off and there's still a droplet of water, you can just touch it to your paper towel and your paper towel will drink that excess water out, which is what you want because we already have enough liquid in our green, so we don't need more. So just kind of touch it in there. Now let's try to make some branches. So just push, you're barely touching. You don't want to press down really hard. You're just doing really light strokes. If you press down hard, you'll get fatter lines. Okay, so we want very thin lines to make those branches, right? So just mm -hmm. practice making some lines first. And now let's practice, let's pretend we're making berries. 
there's uh, someone at the door. You got them? Okay. So let's pretend we're making berries. So let's use that tiny brush again and let's uh, touch it to the paper towel, let it drink out the excess water, and then let's go to our um, red. And now let's pretend we're making one of those berries. So we just want to kind of tap in a circle. Okay, because we're in a small area with the berries and we don't want to try to lay our big fat brush in that area because we'll just go out of the line. So instead of doing that, we just tap. And plus you get that cool watercolor effect when you tap because the water will pool on one side of the paper and that's where you'll get like your shading kind of thing going on. So just tap, 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 tap. And then we'll leave like a little highlighted area. Okay. So there's one berry. Okay. <laughs> and one more thing. Oh, so which country started the tradition of putting up a Christmas tree? Was it England, Switzerland, Germany, or Austria? Which country started the tradition of putting up a Christmas tree? Any guesses? I would guess Germany or Austria. Germany. I guess too. Germany. Austria. Yeah. 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 I feel like they have lots of Christmas trees. <laughs> That's oh. right. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. Germany. Germany. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend we're making that pine cone. So the first thing we're going to do when we, after we trace this, right, is we're going to oh, do this brush. Cool. We're going to dip our brush into our um, our brown or our, what do you call it? Is that raw umber? Mm -hmm. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I forget. All right. And so we're just going to dry paint here. So we're making like half moons because this is the shape of the pine cone. Okay. So let's just make three rows of half moons. Okay, you don't want your brush really wet. Just enough to lay down the color. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up with our brown and we're going to go in between there mm -hmm. to create those shadows that are created when we look at a pine cone. Okay. So this is just some practice to get accustomed to the brush. And you can practice a lot more on these. I encourage you to try some calligraphy, you know, whatever you like to do, because just watercolors are so beautiful. These brushes are great for calligraphy. Um, you know, if you just start out with a really light stroke, press down and then lift, you'll get all of these really nice shapes. really cool watercolor kind of strokes. So there's that. So now let's get down to business and paint some pine cones. So you're going to need your next card. And we're going to lay that down and we're going to get some, uh, we're going to get some washi tape on there. Oh, okay. All right, we're just going to use our washi tape on the side just to hold the paper down flat. So just put a, pa a piece on both sides. And on the top. And then we're going to trace our image. Oops. What is the biggest grossing Christmas movie of all time? Is it Home Alone, The Polar Express, Elf, or Bad Santa? Which is the biggest grossing Christmas movie of all time? It's Home Alone. Home Alone. That's I, really think. Too. I think. I've never seen it. Home what do you think, Evie? Oh. I think it's um, Polar Express. No. <laughs> and the answer is home alone you were right so let's go ahead and a trivia <laughs> what was that 
I said, my brain is full of a lot of trivia. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> so everybody's got a piece of carbon paper. So there's a shiny side and there's a dull side. So we want to make sure that we put the shiny side down on the uh, paper, okay? Then we want to take the image of the pine cone and just kind of line that up. And then you can take a pen or a pencil and then let's just trace the, um, the straight lines. Let's not worry about the, uh, the other lines so much, okay? The, these lines going that way. Because we'll put those in later with our paintbrush. So just make those initial lines. Okay, so make sure you got shiny side down, otherwise nothing will transfer to your card. And then just go ahead and make your little berries. And then your uh, pine cone shape. And hold it down when you have to move to a different section. Just move your hand to the other side and hold everything down. And then don't worry about the intricacies inside the pine cone. Just get the basic shape down because we're going to make those shapes on our own. Okay. And who wrote the best selling Christmas single? Was it the best selling Christmas single? Was it Nat King Cole? Uh, Bing Crosby, Mariah Carey, or Otis Redding. Who wrote the best-selling Christmas song? Okay, Carla, what do you think? I was going to say Mariah. Oh, really? Mariah. But I don't know. That's my gut. I was going to say Nat King Cole. And the answer is? Oh, bang. Bing. Oh, wrong. Bing. 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 <laughs> Christmas. Oh. Okay. All right. So there, my paper's not going anywhere. And the washi tape is helpful because when you use watercolors, your paper tends to buckle because, you know, you're putting water on paper. So it, it changes, the, changes the paper. So uh, let's, let's start with our evergreen leaves. So if we look at our reference image, if we look at our little reference image, our first evergreen leaves start here. So let's go ahead and pick up some of our green that we mixed already. And this is also how you preserve the integrity of your watercolors. So I'm just going to put this green right on top of that line. I actually made my line a little heavy, but that's okay. Um, it helps preserve the integrity of your watercolors by mixing your colors uh, in the tray to the side. And so here I'm just putting some uh, evergreen needles down the side. And you guys, we practice how to do that. So just feel free to make them however you like. And then I think we'll go, let's see, down here to make another evergreen line. And this is gonna be a holly leaf right over here. So we'll do our other evergreen branch. And if your green isn't intense enough, feel free to go back into your um, pigment and pick up some more green. And you'll cover up that carbon line. And then light strokes. On both sides. Okay, and then what was the first company to use Santa Claus in advertising? Was it Microsoft, Ford Motor, Coca Cola or Nike? Who was the first company to use Santa Claus in advertising? Crickets. Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola. <laughs> I got to go with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to go with Coca-Cola. And the answer is Coca-Cola. Good guess. 
Yes. Okay, same thing on the other side. So just kind of nice light strokes. And what's also kind of fun is um, you might want to add a different hue of green. So maybe we want to take some of our yellow here and mix it in with the green. So I lightened it a little bit. So let me pull a little bit more from here. I'm going to use a lighter shade of green. So do you see what I did there? I just added a little droplet of green to my puddles of uh, raw umber here. And I'm just going to go in and put another set of strokes in just to give it extra level, level of interest. Same thing here. Just gives it a different tone. And then for the holly leaves, so just make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. Okay. For the holly leaves, <laughs> we have a peanut gallery over here. Um, <laughs> if you can hear her. <laughs> um, so we're going to start at the top of the holly leaf here. And you can make it in whatever shape you like. So this one is kind of like, looks more like a maple leaf, but you can also do where it's just like a, a half circle, another half circle, and then a final half circle. Okay. And then a point. Then another half circle, another half circle, another one, and a point. And so I, what I like to do is to start the color at the base, make it a little deeper, and then pull. With watercolors, you kind of pull the color towards the opposite end. And this also, you can give more dimension by adding a darker color. And I would do this with um, a little black. So I'm going to go over to the other side and make these two holly leaves. So same thing. It's a half circle and another half circle, <laughs> another half circle and a point. Okay. So it's a half circle here, a half circle here, half circle here, and a point meet in the middle. Which Christmas Carol was the first song ever broadcast from space? Was it The Little Drummer Boy, White Christmas, Jingle Bells, or Let It Snow? Which was the I think first? It was Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. You sound very, very sure of that answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we got one more. Holly. Yes, it was Jingle Bells. Ding, 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 ding. So just Cheryl, uh, sorry to interrupt. This is this is uh, a PSA. Sure. The, we have five more minutes. Okay. And, and how our full group dance lesson begins in the main event room. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Katie. Boy, you have a fun evening planned. Wow. <laughs> Charleston. Okay, so just with your leaf, just go ahead and dab that color in. And I guess I'm all about teaching. Um, and I've enjoyed the watercolors so much that I wanted to make sure that you walked away with some actual skills about how to use them because you can paint a million times with the colors that you have, the palette that, that I found for you guys. So I hope you do get a chance to, to enjoy them. So here, I'm going to go ahead and let the paintbrush soak or let the paper towel soak out the excess water from my brush and I'm going to go in and pick up some of that raw umber okay 
and I'm just going to start at the top and let the uh, paper towel soak out the excess water. And I'm going to make my first little triangle here. I'm just going to make a little triangle, not too wet. I'm going to do this dry on. And in fact, let's add some intensity to this. And I'll do a berry, so that way you won't walk away not knowing what to do with the rest of the painting in case we don't get it to finish. But we can stay, can't we, Katie? <laughs> this one doesn't end, right? We don't have to go dance. I don't want to go dance. <laughs> I want to paint. <laughs> I actually don't know the answer to that question, Debbie. Do you know? Yeah, I think that one goes until 420. So we have um, another, what? If, 18, 19? Yeah, this goes to 420. So we have a few more minutes. Oh, nine minutes. Yeah. Nine minutes. yeah. Okay. <laughs> then this, this session. I thought this, oh, this goes to 420, but the dance starts at 4. That's right. The yeah. dance starts at 415. So there's another dance, um, a group dance at 415. So. Yeah, this ends at 420. If you want to get into a group dance, you can go at 440. There's the second session for a group dance at 440. In the small group, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to paint after this is the Christmas tree. So if you did want to stick around, you could. Um, of course, it's up to you guys. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to keep going. So we're kind of doing a brick pattern, which is um, the standard, what do they call that? The Fibonacci, no, what is it called? Fibonacci sequence that um, natural things uh, are designed by the universe, by God, whatever your belief system is. But yeah, that's how pine cones are designed too. So yeah, kind of similar to how bricks are laid. <laughs> There's like an organized pattern there. So that's what we're trying to uh, duplicate a little bit here and just kind of in, um, you know, these half moon shapes. So just kind of continue that along. And then do we have another? Yeah, which reindeer was Rudolph's father? <laughs> <laughs> now that's some trivia yeah. I know. <laughs> So was it Dasher, Dancer, Cupid, or Donner? Who was the mother? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I have to think back to the movie, the Claymation movie. Remember? Donner. Was it Donner? <laughs> I don't know. It's a new one on me. <laughs> it was Donner. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. That old school Rudolph show. The old school Rudolph show. Yeah, Which the old, old one. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, I never even knew that there was that much history behind the ring. <laughs> you haven't watched enough TV. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're doing this kind of brick laying, you know, we're making these little shapes. And then when these dry, then we can go in and do our darker color, which we'll have to reactivate because mine's all dry now. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go in and fill those spaces with a darker color. Uh, but for now, let's move on to the berries so that when you get ready to paint the berries, you guys could be a couple minutes late for your dance lesson, right? Um, we're here, I'm going to show you how to dot the color in on the berries. So in which state does a Christmas story take place? Uh, with little Ralphie, which I just watched last night. Was it Illinois? <laughs> um, I can't see the answers, hold on. Illinois, New York, Pennsylvania, or Indiana? Where did the Christmas story take place? Now, right now, I'm just taking my red and I'm just dabbing it. I'm not painting, I'm dabbing. Okay, and I'm going like in a half circle. See, notice that where it's not moving from where I, uh, place my brush. So now I'm just going to pull that color towards the center. Okay, and then I'm going to go around the edge. And then we're going to get, there we have our highlight already, just right there. And we're going to let that little puddle of red dry. And I'm going to do the same thing here. 
And the answer is? <laughs> uh, Indiana. Indiana. Yes. My guess. It yeah. is Sorry. Indiana. And just tap that in. So can you see this? Um, Shelby, are we yes. zoomed in on that? So okay. Fine. All right. So we're going to just keep going in a little circle like this. And then I'm going to the center and moving it up. And then when this dries, you're going to get a natural looking berry. So cool. I just love these watercolors. And the same thing for this berry. Just keep moving around in a circle. Just with the very tip of your brush. Don't press down hard. I think that's what we tend to do. Uh, growing up using crayons and pencils and stuff is we press down really hard when um, for watercolors, especially it just takes a really light touch. And then we're just pulling that color from the edges to the center. And that white area becomes the highlight of the berry. Okay. So that's how you do the berries. Now, actually, I want to go back and pick up some of this. Um, I think I'll pick up some of this brown. I'm going to do something to my leaf to give it some more depth. I'm going to add a little bit of this brown to the green and then put it at the base of the holly. Not too much, just a deeper green. And if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, just touch it to your paper towel so your paper towel can drink out the excess water. And then you want to thin that out. I want to make sure it blends. So I've rinsed my brush, let my paper towel drink out the excess water, and now I'm going to blend these colors in together. So you can't tell where I started with that. See how nicely that blends in? It's just the wonders of watercolor. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my red now. Which actor played the lead in the Santa Claus movie? Was it James Earl Jones, Kurt Russell, Tim Allen, or Billy Bob Thornton? Which actor played the lead in the Santa Claus movie? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that one. <laughs> it. The Santa Claus. Come on, the Santa Claus movie. <laughs> you know that answer. <laughs> Tim Allen. Good job, baby. <laughs> Good job. Did you guys see the Christmas Chronicles? Yes. Oh, I love that movie. Did you watch the second one? Yeah, I wasn't that impressed. I fell asleep. <laughs> you fell asleep? I know. I was so disappointed. It was like they just tried to... Ugh. It was a stretch. Was yeah, great. it was. <laughs> the first one was definitely a keeper. So I'm doing my, uh, my top berry now. And same thing, just do it around the perimeter and then drag your color towards the center and leave your little highlight. Very simple. Here, let's see. around here. You can do that, Bob. <laughs> I love that little voice. <laughs> So notice how the water doesn't leak out of the area. It just stays put. What's really interesting, um, like we didn't get to do the, um, the Santa Claus one, or Santa Claus, snowman one. But what's so cool is that you use the washi tape. I'm going to show you this. So just in case when you want to paint this on your own, you use the washi tape all around the perimeter to create this frame. This is where you get the frame from. So you use the washi tape around the perimeter of the card like this. And then you paint within that perimeter. Uh, God, I wish I could show you so much about these watercolors. It's just so cool. Uh, but um, like there's this uh, one technique called uh, wet on wet painting where 
you just kind of wet the canvas with water first, okay? You wet the canvas with water. I'm dying to show you this, hold on, because I don't want you to go without having this technique. And then when you're painting on your own, you can see it, all right? So let me show you this real quick. <laughs> I'm going to take another card and show you this. So watch this real quick. Um, so I'm going to take my number 12 brush because it carries the most water. This is the one you're going to use to cover heavy, big areas, all right? So I'm just going to show you this. So I'll clean my brush pretty well. And I'm just going to take some water and lay it down on the canvas like this. So you want to saturate your canvas. It doesn't work unless the paper is saturated with water. Okay, because if you don't put enough water, it'll dry up before you're at, you add your color. So that's another reason why we, um, we mix our colors beforehand. Okay, I'm just going to make a square so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm just laying this color down in a square shape. Okay, and I'm getting a nice gloss. You want a gloss on your paper. Then now I'm gonna take a little dab of that red I just mixed. Watch what happens. You see that? How cool is that? Cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, so when you do your snowman, that's what you wanna do. You wanna do the background and you wanna wet it. And then you just touch your color in like this and you'll get this wonderful effect. Okay, so of course, you know, this is kind of like blood, but when you do it with blue, <laughs> it's like clouds in the sky and stuff, you know? So here, I'm picking up a little blue to show you too. This is a Halloween painting class, so the blue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So well, when you use blue and then you can add a little bit more water. So the, the paint will only go where the wet, where the water is. Okay. So for this guy, you want to dilute that blue. That's kind of intense. So never take it directly out of the pigment into your canvas. Make sure that you put the pigment down first and then add water to it. Dilute it, okay, because it's very concentrated, and then add your droplets in. Then you'll get that really soft look. Hey, that looks like the flag. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and finish this little guy. What time is the next group coming, um, Kate? Did she leave? Well, so the, our group is really supposed to be done at 420. Um, I can look and see what time the other group comes in. Okay. Uh, starting at 430. The other group comes in at 430, yeah. Okay, because they should be able to just come in if they want to, uh, because we're not stopping the recording or anything, which I'm sorry, I'm I was supposed to tell you guys you're being recorded. So I hope I, you know, didn't violate okay. <laughs> I know you guys are mostly attorneys, so I was supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so that you can look back on the recording and maybe get some. Uh, no, we're happy. We're happy that, and, and I think everybody knew that these were going to be recorded, so no worries. Okay, good. <laughs> glad, glad to know that. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and keep with my, why is that coming out green? What did I touch? Maybe I need some fresh water. Can I have some fresh water, please? Yeah, you guys want to constantly change your water, otherwise you'll get green when you're supposed to be getting brown, and that's not good. So here, I'm going to go back to my um, pine cone. I'm going to put some dark in between these spaces. Thank you so much. So uh, I think I'm going to pick up some of my brown from over here, and I'm going to add it to my umber over here. Now I've been painting. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that you twirl your brush in between your thumb and forefinger so you get that nice point again. Let's tap on a paper towel to make sure to let a paper towel drink out any excess water. 
And then just kind of go in between the lines that you've already painted. And just kind of tap in that color because we want some intense browns in between here. And since the paper is already dry where we painted it previously, shouldn't have any problem with these colors bleeding into each other. And just kind of tap those colors in. And just kind of keep going all the way around. And if you want to, you can, like I, I did my lines a little heavy, um, my, uh, whatchamacallit lines. So I'm gonna double layer my brown to kind of cover them up. And here you go. I got another <laughs> trivia question. The world, <laughs> the world, the word Kwanzaa comes from which language? Is it Shona, Zulu, Swahili, or Arabic? The word Kwanzaa comes from which language? Hmm. Yeah. Swahili. Well, we got a guess. Swahili. That's a good guess. No more guesses? Um, Zulu. Zulu. Wahili. Wahili, good guess. Wow, well done. Okay, so actually I could go back in and with, add a little black and then I could go and give some depth to some of these areas too. So we'll just a shade a tad bit darker in between these areas. Oh, that's the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go now. So I'm going to keep making my little circles, my little half circles all the way around. My little brick lace half circles. Which Jewish dish is made to celebrate the miracle of oil? Is it matzah ball soup, chala, challah, <laughs> kugel, or latkes? Hmm. I think you stumped the class, Shelby. <laughs> Mm. Based on how they're made, I'd probably say latkes. There's a lot of oil in those. Latkes. Yeah, latkes. 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 Yes, latkes. Mm, good job. So it sounds like you've had those before. They were all good. Sour cream and applesauce. Ah, uh, can't beat them. Ooh. It's potato pancakes, right? Oh, it's like a pancake. It's a, it's a potato pancake. So I say it's kind of closer to like hash browns. Or, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, talking about food when I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> okay, so I'm going around the edges with this. And so the lesson you should learn from my um, illustration, even though I painted this several times, I don't know why I did my line so heavy this time. Oh, also, if you find your, your um, paint puddling up like this, other than the berries, like the berries, it works for it to puddle up and dry. But here, we just want to go ahead and take a dry paintbrush and just suck that water right out of there. Just touch your paintbrush there and it'll just suck it right out. Okay, so while that's drying, because I don't want to go in my darker color now, if I try to do that, then it will um, just merge in with those colors. So you don't want to add your darker color now. And I should ask, are the new people for the Christmas tree here? Are the Christmas tree people here yet? No, okay, good, we're fine. Just wanna make sure. 
because they'll be like, that's not what I signed up to paint. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go in now and do something with my holly leaf so I don't have to look at these ugly carbon lines. I'm going to go pick up some of my green and maybe a little um, of my brown. So see what I'm doing here. I'm mixing some of my brown in with the green. So that's where you mix your colors and not on top of your colors. You want to preserve these. I want you to make mini happy watercolor paintings. Okay, so mm -hmm. keep your watercolors kind of pure. So I'm going back with my brown. Now this looks a little more deliberate. Not like I didn't cover my uh, pencil line. And now I'm going to make some little lines here. Now I'm a little happier with the way that looks. So we're just using the tip of a brush. And now I've taken some green and some brown together to make like green brown. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we're going to cover mm -hmm. up those ugly car carbon paper lines, like so, and then just kind of make a few lines like this. And then just kind of pivot your little um, board. And here, so if you like watercolor painting, um, just make sure you buy the right papers, buy the good quality papers, buy the good quality watercolors. I uh, sourced the best watercolor that I could for this class, but there are even better watercolors than this. So, um, but these have a really bright um, pigment. Um, you should get a lot of hours of enjoyment out of painting with these. But yeah, your paper and these brushes will last you quite a while with watercolors as well. Oh, oh okay, we got a next group coming in. So uh, let's ask this last trivia question. Which country has the world's largest reindeer population? Is it Iceland, Finland, Greenland, or Norway? Which country has the largest reindeer population? I think Norway. Norway. Finland. I'm going to guess Finland. Finland. And the answer is Norway. Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, welcome to everyone who's here and you guys who have been painting the pine cone with me. Uh, you're welcome to stay around if you like, because uh, we're going to go right into painting the Christmas tree. Uh, so yeah, I want to welcome all the new people who have just joined us. Uh, are you leaving, Carla? Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. Oh, you are so welcome. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, you're I'll welcome. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Good, good. I'm glad. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right. All right, so welcome you guys. Welcome to uh, Studio 928. I'm Cheryl Vargas. I'm the owner and I'm here with my producer Shelby in the background who's doing trivia for us and she's also taking care of any technical issues that we may not have, but we're swearing off any technical issues. Those will not happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we are just going to have fun. So um, please uh, feel free to turn your cameras on and let us see you um, so we can say hi to everybody. Hi, Mariah. I see your little feather or your, uh, your boa that you're wearing there. Hi, Megan. Hi, Lee and Tyler. Hello. All right. So did you guys do the dance class already or is that next? Did the dance class. We did it. It was so fun. We learned the Charleston. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like a lot of fun. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so we just got done painting the um, pine cone. And so next up is the Christmas tree. So um, this painting, uh, just to be perfectly honest, perfectly honest with you, I painted it in like six minutes. So we're going to stretch this out and we're going to give you opportunity to enjoy it, learn a little bit about watercolors, do a little trivia and have some fun. So um, everybody got um, four um, watercolor cards. Um, this is 140 pound of cold press Strathmore watercolor paper. So it's made especially for watercolor. We're going to use uh, one of the four cards to practice on so that you can have a successful uh, watercolor painting. 
So everyone should have, like I said, the four watercolor um, cards and also some carbon paper and a tracing paper, okay? Um, and of course your reference image. And the reference image is what you can kind of look at, but um, that Christmas tree is not what everybody's gonna get. It's just the idea of a Christmas tree that everyone is gonna have when all is said and done. But what I'd really like for you to get out of this is just kind of learn how to watercolor work. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. And so I'm gonna teach you some strokes first before we get started. So um, I'm gonna suggest that instead of trying to duplicate that tree, we just try to make a Christmas tree that we love, all right? So I'm gonna show you a couple techniques. So first thing first, everyone should have a number 12 brush and a number two brush. Um, they're both round brushes and they're both for watercolors. And then you should have a palette that looks brand new, not like mine, which is a little bit used, okay? Should have two containers of water, one for um, your darker colors and one for lighter colors. And you should also have some paper towels because those are going to be very helpful um, with your techniques. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to do is I think this time we want to lay down a background. Let's do a background. Um, if you have hair dryers. Do you guys have hair dryers handy? Like within 10 feet? We can go get one. <laughs> Yeah? Okay, because what I'm suggesting is this. So you see how this snowman has a background? Right now our tree just has a white background. Would be really cool if we had a background, but we, you know, it's up to you. Would you like to do that? Yes. Yes. Oh, sure. Let's do yeah. it. Okay, good. All right. All right. So you got to grab a hair dryer. And then, so we're going to paint the background first, and then we're going to paint a tree, because that way you'll get more out of this than just painting that tree, okay? So grab your um, hair dryer, and in the meantime, um, happy holidays, cheers. <laughs> We've got our glass of wine here. We're here to toast the holidays with you. And um, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, we'll throw up a trivia question until you're all set. Now we have, let's see, Emily and Laura and Marin and Tyler, who I can't see. Are you guys coming on camera? Can we see you or are you gonna stay incognito? <laughs> I think I'm frozen. Am I frozen? I am, I'm frozen. You are. Yeah, I'm frozen. Okay, there we go. Okay, so which Christmas dish is known for its long shelf life? Is it fruitcake, cranberry sauce, Christmas pudding, or gingerbread cookies? Which Christmas? Fruitcake. 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 Yes, definitely that. Dreaded <laughs> fruitcake. Yes, ding, 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 ding. Okay. All right, so um, we're just going to get started. So I want everybody to bring out a card. And I'd also like for you to get your washi tape. So washi tape is this little roll of tape. I bet you were wondering, like, what is that for, right? Everybody's got one of these. So we're going to bring that out. So let's get that. And then we're going to we are going to tape a border around the card, okay? So I want you to peel off a piece of washi tape and just lay it down across the top. Make, make sure you pull it out long enough so it goes all across your, all the way to the edge because it's gonna help your um, card from buckling from the water that we add, okay? So just push that down into the table, okay, and then take another piece and go down the other side, and just make sure that you um, overlap so that it helps hold down your paper to the table. So the reason why we're doing this is to create a frame around your watercolor. So when you take the tape off, it's very cool, okay. Same thing on the other side. 
and make sure it overextends the card so that it helps stick the paper down to the table. Then press the edges so that it sticks as well. Okay. Then I got one more. And then we want this to be on the card, not over, you know, like it should be more on the card than on the table. Okay, because we're making a frame for our work. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, cool. All right, so um, so this is so cool. This, uh, this is the one thing I love the most about watercolors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prep our paper to accept the pigment. Okay, so, um, oh, so you guys didn't do this yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some blue. So in your color palette, you have some blue and then you have some like purplish blue. We're going to use the blue. And if you wanted, you could add some purple, but we're going to start with blue. So you want to wet your number 12 brush, which is your bigger brush, this one. And you want to wet it in water. Drop a couple of drops of water onto your palette, maybe just in the center, okay, like this. Then we're gonna pick up some pigment by just moving it around on top of the color. And then we're gonna add this color to the water that we just created. Okay, so now we got a nice pool of what looks to be sky blue, right? Okay, the next thing you're going to do, which I've already done, is we're going to add some green to our color palette. So let's, let's first go ahead and drop a couple of drops of water into the next well inside the plastic cover. And now let's pick up some pigment just by swishing around a couple of times on top. And we have a trivia question. Which Christmas carol was the first song ever broadcast in space? Was it, there's someone at the door, Little Drummer Boy, White Christmas, Jingle Bells, or Let It Snow? Which song was the first song ever broadcast in space? White Christmas. White Christmas. Megan sounds convinced. Anybody else? Well, let's see what the answer is. Jingle bells. Oh, oh jingle bells. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm wearing lipstick. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. red candy cane. Uh -huh. All right. So now, here's the fun part. Now, all we're going to do, everybody got their hair dryers, right? We're gonna to go to our clean water. We make sure my brush is clean. I'm going over here to my paper towel, make sure there's no pigment left in my brush, right? Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna apply water to our card, okay? So if you can see, my brush is very wet and I'm just gonna lay down some water, nice and easy, all across the canvas or the card. So what we want is a nice glistening. Structure. We don't want puddles, but we do want it extremely wet. So just take your time and kind of paint with water without the watercolor. Okay. So we want to go over it twice because we don't want this to dry while we're putting our pigment in, right? So it should glisten. So just kind of turn your head to the side because it shouldn't be drying. If it's drying already, that means you don't have enough water. Okay. Now here's the fun part. We're going to start at the top at the quarters. We're going to pick up some of our blue that we created. And we're just gonna touch the water. Facing. We're just gonna touch the pigment to the, to the water. And you're gonna watch how the color just spreads. So we're just gonna dab, dab, dab this color all across the sky. 
Okay, so kind of here and there, there and here. And just kind of watch what the color does. It kind of spreads out. Make sure you get close to the edges so that we create that nice frame. And then the trivia question is, in Miracle on 43rd or 34th Street, that's my dyslexia kicking in. Um, <laughs> on which, <laughs> on which, in which department does, uh, oh wait, um, oh, oh, Miracle on 34th Street centers on which department store? So Marshall Fields, Target, Macy's, or Bloomingdale's? Miracle on 34th Street. Macy's? Macy's, you got a Macy's guess. Good guess. And yeah, it's just we're gonna let that color spread out for a minute there. Let it take on that life of its own. That's where that watercolor is so fun. So it's like little clouds in between. So when this dries on its own, it's fun, but we don't have that luxury, so we're going to help it along with our blow dryer. Okay. It's okay to leave some spaces in between. Up to you. If you want a solid blue sky, that's okay too. You can go back and add some more color if you wish. Like maybe towards the sides, it's more intense, the blue. It's Macy's, you're right. Very good. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so I'm going to mute just for a second, grab my blow dryer, and I will be right back. You want, you want me to put some more on there, baby? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, I forgot to mention that you should hold everything now when you're blow drying, otherwise everything flies away. <laughs> um, okay, so and washi tape is more practical for borders than holding down your whole card. You probably want to pit, use some painter's tape or something like that, or um, I actually have artist tape. You can use artist tape to hold down um, your small card like this when you're working on it. Um, if you really get into watercolor, then you can buy like a block of watercolor paper that comes um, already kind of like um, uh, how do I, it blocked so that it won't lift. So, but anyway, so I, it occurs to me that we're painting a Christmas tree, so we need to be doing this. <laughs> we need to be doing. Um, uh, portrait instead of landscape. I just realized oh. so. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. 
Yeah, so now what we'll do is we'll transfer our image down and it's just lines and actually um, just to give you um, guidance, you can use your carbon paper. I'm just gonna use, I, um, there's another technique you can use where you just kind of rub a pencil up and down the tree on those lines and then transfer that way, which I think I'm gonna do because I don't like the heavier lines of the carbon paper. So you're welcome to do that if you like, but you're also welcome to use the carbon paper, but I would just encourage you to use really light strokes when you're transferring your image. Does that make sense? Mariah, I see, or Maria, I see you looking at me like, what is she oh. talking about? So if I just have the white paper down, what are you gonna trace it with, did you say? Okay, so if you just have the tracing paper, if you wanted to just make very, very light lines, you could take a number two pencil okay. and just put on the back. On the back. Yeah. And then kind of scribble, scribble those down. Okay. Or you could use your carbon paper and then just make sure you just do really light strokes. Okay. So um, I'm going to use the line from uh, my previous practice drawing. So I'm just going to, we're just making a straight line down and then a couple of lines across just to give us an idea of where the tree is. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to make some willy-nilly lines. So there. So it's just to give me an idea where my tree's going to sit. Okay, that's not the finished product, of course. So now that we have, um, did you guys dry your paper yet? Yep. You did? Okay, good, 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 good. So now we're going to take our, let's start with our number uh, four brush. Let's start with the smaller brush, right? So we're going to go to our green paint, which we put down on our canvas and just kind of tap it in there. And then we're just going to kind of dot in some color. Let's just kind of dot in some color in the shape of a Christmas tree. Just kind of dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. And no rhyme and reason, just kind of dot, dot, dot in a pattern that makes you happy, basically. <laughs> Just here and there, here and here. And just think of evergreen branches. You know? I think I kind of laid my heart a little crooked, but that's okay. Because it's just the idea of that personalized little card. And then of course, when you sign your name, it just makes it all the better. So just tap, tap, tap in the shape of a little Christmas tree. Up and down, right and left, tap, tap, tap. So try not to actually draw the line, try to just tap it because then you'll get the idea of branches. Okay, so which Christmas decoration is actually a parasitic plant? Is it Christmas wreath, mistletoe, holly, or poinsettia? Which one of these little Holiday mistletoe? parasite. <laughs> what was that? Mistletoe. Mistletoe. Good guess. I don't know. Holly. Holly. Invasive. I don't know if it's a parasite. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is mistletoe. Yay. Yay. Nice. <laughs> that I did not know. Thank you for that extra holiday information there, Shelby. <laughs> and don't you know, doesn't it want to make you kiss underneath it now? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like parasitic to other plants or something? You don't know. Okay. All right. You just give the shocking trivia and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going back to my green. I'm just kind of dotting it in. So see how kind of cool that is? I mean, it's not, you're, you're not, you're just dabbing in that color. Your dabbing looks so much better than mine. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> just tip, 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 tip. Just lightly touch, lightly touch on both sides. And I think the trick is just leaving the space in between because then you can stand back. As a matter of fact, 
stop what you're doing right now, pull out your phone and take a picture. Cause that will help you get a better perspective of how you're doing with your tree. Just leave some air in between each one of your little stippling marks. Then if you're not happy, then you can go back and add some more, okay? So just think branches. And mine only looks better because you think I'm a better artist, but you're just as good as an artist as I am. Just don't be so hard on yourselves. And plus, whenever, like, if you cook or you dress or whatever you do, you're always more critical of yourself than anyone else will ever be. Because to me, I'm looking, I'm looking at my tree and going, eh. I think Dara's doing his concluding remarks. Let's see. Which country has the world's largest reindeer population? Is it Iceland, Finland, Greenland, or Norway? Which country has the largest reindeer population? Finland. Finland. I'm totally guessing. Sounds reasonable. So now, if you want to make it look like even more cooler, maybe try adding a little blue. Let's add, let's pick up, rinse off our brushes. And let's pick up a little of this blue that we used before and add it to our green. Just for some contrast. So just remember to mix your colors in these little wells. That's what they're there for. Never mix directly on your palette. And then let's just dot in some, this is gonna be a little bit darker now. And just maybe in the center, cause, and underneath, cause that's where, you know, the shadow is. Little areas of shadow in between. And just dot, dot, dot. Forget about the tree, just make the color. And Norway is correct, yay. Yes. So yeah, we're making the shadow. <laughs> You've already done this. Okay, honey, go ahead and it. You, it did work. Now you have to color it. Okay, how are you guys doing? Yeah, I don't understand how you're doing this. It's absolutely phenomenal. Mine looks nothing like that. <laughs> Um, just <laughs> barely touching the canvas with the tip of your brush, just dotting it, just dotting it in the shape of the tree, just a triangle, so think shape. I bet yours looks great. You're just being hard on yourself. So in those little areas close to the trunk, and in the center of the tree, that's where it would be darker, right? So that's where our, um, the blue that we made uh, mixed with the green um, creates the shadow for us. Just dot, 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 dot. And then let's give it a little snow bank in the center. In which state does a Christmas story, Ralphie's story, take place? Is it Illinois, New York, Pennsylvania, or Indiana? Which state does the Christmas story take place? Which I just watched last night, probably for the third time already this year. <laughs> Okay, so and then definitely at the bottom, we're going to put some darker blue and green down here because that's definitely in shadow. And then finally, I'm going to take some of our blue that we mixed earlier, maybe pick up a little bit more from my palette and add it to the tray here. And I'm going to dilute it one time. I'm just gonna make it like a little snow bank right here. Oh, let's make one there, one right 
there. And then I'm going to add some water and pull that color down while it's wet. So don't wait too long because it will, it will dry. So yeah, just blur that line with the end of your brush. And the answer is Indiana. Ralphie. And then <laughs> good job. <laughs> so when you do watercolors, because it's like the basic form of art, it's like the original form of art started in the caves, right? So the best way to sign a watercolor, I always say, is in pencils. If you have a pencil handy, just go there, put your initials there, put you know, the year, and then send your cards off to some friends um, and just tell them, yeah, I painted this myself. And I would love to see your paintings. I'm just gonna put a little Cheryl here, 2020. It just does, just the pencil just makes it, I think, when you sign with the pencil. Did we lose people already? We lost like a lot of people. Where'd they go? Oh, they went, they had something after this? I don't remember if they did or not. But I was wanting to take a photograph. So people who are still here, can we hold up your um, images and then take a picture before you go? We'd love to see what you've done. Oh, it'll be hard to see because of the, um, the, the background. Oh, OK. Cool. Good job. Here, I'm going to get my camera out and take a snapshot. Yeah, I guess to just turn your background off for a minute. Oh, can I turn it off? Wait, one second. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Hi. Oh, good job. Good job. There we go. Your background turned out really nice. It looks very cloudy. Oh, okay. Cool. Good job. Cool. All right. So that went... It was, there was more time than I thought. I thought for sure the watercolors would take more time, but you guys did a really good job and you did a good job of keeping up and everything. So. Cool, Megan, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah you're too nice, Greg. You're too nice. <laughs> oh, my good judge of art, let me tell you. <laughs> I like the spacing that you achieved. Yeah. The spacing? Yeah, I like how some of your branches went out a little farther than what's underneath, so it's not all. Right, so that's why I, um, I kind of wanted to ignore the lines and just focus on the triangle, the shape of the triangle, and just not making solid areas, just leaving a lot of air in between. But guess what? The good news is this is your practice card. So you got three more cards <laughs> that you could actually awesome. paint. Um, um, I'm going to be painting the snowman um, so that you guys can have that as well um, to paint because this is a lot of fun. We're going to do the background again. You know, you're going to have this background taped off like this. And then um, the reason why you have this little pot of white is so that you can use the toothpick that's also enclosed to dip into the, the white acrylic and put the little dots on. Oh, very cool. Okay, so um, yeah, you'll be able to do that and um, share these with some friends before the end of the year. Put them on a gift or something like that. I love note cards. I love them when they're blank. So, okay. So did anyone have any questions or anything? Be happy to stay here and chat with you for a minute. These are cool. Thank you. You are welcome. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook if you like. Um, we'll put that information in the chat. Uh, and yeah, we're going to be doing uh, some holiday things. Actually, I think our day is kind of in this week, but we're going to pick up at the end of the month and start doing parties again. Um, but we have a trivia question before we go, and it is, which actor played the lead in the Santa Claus movie? Was it James Earl Jones, Kurt Russell? Tim Allen or Billy Bob Thornton? Who Tim Allen! Him? Yay! I think that's right. Ding, 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 ding. 
<laughs> Tim Allen and Mr. Santa Claus. It was Tim Allen. Look at that. Did you guys see the Christmas Chronicles? Not yet. I hope oh, it's good. Kurt Russell? Oh, it's good. It's good. The second one, meh. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much, but the first one is really good. Like, watchable uh, more than once. So. Okay. You enjoy it. You should enjoy it. Cheryl, I have to sign off. Thank you so much. This was lovely. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I am so glad. Thank you so much. Take care and happy holidays. All right. Same to you, Megan. Take care. I see Lizda is still with us. Greg is still with us. Marin and Tyler. Yeah, thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. We hope that you follow us. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Um, and then other than that, we'll say so long and um, have a great rest of your year. Thank you, Thank you for so all much, of you. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye. Bye.